to respond if an accident occurs in the mountains using the self-evacuation action plan and an improvised stretcher method. When approaching the casualty, do not panic and remain calm. Assess the situation and ensure there is no further threat to the casualty or to the rest of the group. If further threat is present, ensure that the group and the casualty are moved to safety if possible. Now, apply first aid. Check the circulation, airways and breathing. Now, if any first aid is required, ensure the treatment does no harm. It's now very important to stabilise the victim. To make the victim as comfortable as possible and protect against the cold and the weather, you can do this by providing extra padding on the ground to prevent the victim losing heat through the ground. Also provide any extra clothing or warm food and drink. If possible, insulate the victim using a shelter and ensure the rest of the group is stabilised and happy. When considering using a stretcher, you should assess the casualty's injuries first. If the casualty is suffering from severe shock or severe hypothermia, it's a bad idea to transport the casualty, as this can cause death. You must also consider what terrain you're about to cross when thinking of transporting a casualty by a stretcher. If the terrain is very steep, the stretcher is not a suitable method, and you may want to think of another action plan. Exhausting. Even if you have a very large group and continue switching around, it's very time consuming. Ensure your group is kept warm and dry while you're making these decisions. Stretchers can be improvised using walking equipment that you carry with you. Using rucksacks, bags, tent poles, clothes and strong poles. Thread strong poles or tent poles through a bin bag to form a stretcher. I'm going to show you how to make a stretcher with a group shelter and a walking rope. These are common equipment that you should carry with you on a walking day. When making the group shelter, you can use stones and place the stone in each corner to make handles. You would use the group shelter stretcher method as it's very easy to use and it is easy to carry. When making the rope stretcher, you firstly make eight loops beside the casualty. The loops must be the same width as the casualty. These loops can be adjusted. Secondly, you must make use a clove hitch. Make two loops, one with the rope coming out in the front and one with the rope coming out back. Cross them over and then put them over the loop that you previously made and tighten. The benefits of a rope stretcher are it provides more support than a group shelter stretcher to a casualty, so if the casualty's injuries are more severe, I would suggest using the rope stretcher. Okay, so now you thread the rope, the loose rope, through the coils, and once it's all through the coils, you do a quick stop and up, tie it off at the end. To summarise, when approaching a casualty, approach with care. 
stabilize and reassure the rest of the group. Now you have stretch options. Use the group shelter, using stones in the corners to provide handles and using the rope shelter. Firstly make 8 loops, the width and length of the casualty and then use clove hitch to join the loops together. Then thread the excess rope round and finish with a stopper knot. It's good for assistant leaders to practice making them and to remind themselves how difficult it is to carry stretches over terrain.